I cannot believe that I'm doing transfer rumours already at this point in March and the transfer window doesn't even open for, say, another two months. But, you know, the transfer rumour mills are already starting up around West Ham. I've started even making notes on my phone of every single player West Ham's been linked with so far summer 2022 and it's not even summer 2022 yet and so far we're on to 18 players now i'm not going to get through all 18 because that's just ludicrous time wasting ridiculous and some of the transfer rumors aren't even true so i'm just going to pick out one particular rumor after another and just focus on ones that are i would say more credible than others now when we talk about credibility, one often source that is trusted around the club is ex-West Ham United employee. And he has made an admission that the club is looking into buying two young championship stars. Two young attackers who have been excellent in the championship this season, are relatively new to the game, but have already made quite a big impact on their respective teams. And those two players are... Hull City's Keane Lewis Potter and Nottingham Forest Brennan Johnson. Now, both players have one thing in common. Both of them were born in the respective town slash cities of their respective clubs. I'll start off by talking about Lewis Potter. So, Keane Lewis Potter recently turned 21 years old. He predominantly plays as a winger and he has also been played as a centre-forward. He started out his career on loan at Bradford Park Avenue in the National League North and then featured for Hull in League One, where he quickly became a starter in the team and won promotion back to the championship. Uh, in this season, he has been one of Hull's best players. He has been an assister and a scorer. He's got very modern traits about him he's a very modern winger and he's someone who likes to contradict himself but in a positive way he plays on the left despite being right footed and this allows him to cut in more cut back and try to wriggle his way past full backs and th that is hated by his pace he runs towards an opposition defense and cut inside on his foot he likes to press opposition defenses and it's one main reason why a lot of teams are after him. I know that Brentford was after him, Spurs was after him. And since Hull got a takeover, it's been reported that he won't be sold for no less than £20 million come the summer. Um, Hull's new Turkish billionaire chairman has said, and I quote, at this moment... Even if they, they be in a club, pay 20 million, I will not sell him. I want to, him to continue showing his talents with us. In life, everything has a time and timing is very important. And I don't think it's the right move now. We just bought the club and we want to move it forward together. One thing that may work in West Ham's favour is the fact that Jared Bowen knows Lewis Potter pretty well. And they both played with each other at Hull. So I think what we could look at it as is that when Bowen left... Lewis Potter filled in the gap. And it seems that although Hull fans would dream to have Jared Bowen back in their team, they have Lewis Potter at least. And he's been a more than adequate replacement. I can see why a lot of teams are after him. Uh, I think his dribbling, his crossing and his cutting back and hassling opponents is good. But one thing that does worry me a bit is his lack of physical strength he can easily be pushed around but in turn he likes to push other players around so it kind of helps cancel that out next player is brennan johnson born and raised in nottingham he is living the dream playing for his hometown club he plays as an attacking midfielder mainly he's 20 years old and he is already a full international for Wales. Brennan Johnson mainly can play in a 4-2-3-1 formation, which is similar to what West Ham plays. Um, when Johnson was playing at Lincoln City during that loan spell, he came to prominence because he operated well in attacking three 
and played with a direct forward, usually behind two defensive mids or two holding mids, and usually had a player on either wing. What helped him to operate was the fact that he had a little bit of a choice. He would either allow his wingers to run straight ahead so he could pass diagonal balls, or he could retain possession of the ball and attack himself. Yeah, that just shows Johnson's high footballing IQ, and it allowed for Lincoln to use him in a lot of positions and to experiment with him a little bit. Um, he's a right-footed player, and because of this, he likes to be quite thunderous with his shots. He tends to shoot from outside of the box. Similar characteristic to what Bruno Fernandes does at Manchester United, although we're talking about a championship player, and the two do not quite compare, but it was just a simile or to use. Um, he can be deployed on the right or the left of the field as well. And when he's deployed on the left, he tries to come inside rather than to go wider. Um, defensively, that causes a few issues for him, but he's not really a defensive-minded player. And that's something he may have to work on if he comes into the Premier League. He might just have to work a little bit on his defensive aspect of the game and try not to lose the ball. We see Manuel Lanzini dribble with the ball when he's playing on a wider position. He's able to, to take on a lot of players without losing it, as was the case against Sevilla. That's not the case with Brennan Johnson. He doesn't always have that threat from his feet and he has been known to lose the ball at times he has been known to play as in a 4-4-1-1 formation but West Ham doesn't tend to play that and it doesn't suit our team by doing so um, I think that he is playing in a very challenging Forest team it's a team that went from the despair of facing early relegation to climbing up to be top half finishers at the very least under manager Steve Cooper. And Cooper has done a fantastic job at Forest as well. Because if you look at what Brennan Johnson's been doing there, he's been really helped by a new manager. Chris Hewton didn't provide the support for the players. And one thing that Cooper has given Johnson is a sense of structure and a sense of organisation. I think that's what David Moyes does. So they're quite similar in that sense. Um, he's made Johnson a lot more confident with his passing ability. And I think that that's another thing that will make him very competent in the field in Premier League, the fact that he's got a decent passing um, he, he can attack in transition and wins a lot of penalties. I think that when he was playing for Lincoln City, he won, and I believe it was a record high, seven penalties. Which would not be a massive problem. We're not too bad from the penalty spot, in all, it, to be fair. But once Martin over retires, we've got to find a new penalty taker. Mm, you know. So him winning the penalties, half the battle, at least. Um... But one thing that strikes me about Johnson as well, and our final comment about him, his aptitude, attitude, and IQ all strike me. He's a 20-year-old lad who turns 21 in a couple of months' time. I think he is very excellent for a local lad. He un he's got a good understanding of the game. He's willing to try out new things and put himself right into the deep end. It's not new territory for him to do things like that. He's always been like that as a player. And if you look at him as his overall game, there's a lot of work to do, but there, it's not too far away at least. Keen Lewis Potter and, De and Brennan Johnson coming in, that's a winger and attacking mid-sorted. That is filling two needed positions. And we know how David Moyes is in the transfer market. He likes um, value for money rather than spending tons on trash. So it's very plausible and very doable. And I think these two would be highly underrated ballers. But they'll be so technical and so creative in our team. We'll be talking about them. They'll be major talk around the East End. So if both of them are watching... Please pack up your stuff and get to the bowl.
right now. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Wheel and Deal. If you like this video and you watch my channel, you know what to do. And if you're watching my videos and you're not subscribed to my channel, then what are you doing? You're missing out on some good content here, folks. So don't forget to subscribe for more content. Comment below because I do read the comments and I like to see what you all have to say about my stuff. So take care, everybody, and I will see you all soon.